Good to be in God's house praising Him and worshiping Him with His body. It does my heart good. I love coming to Syracuse because I'm cared for so well here and just refreshed and renewed. And it is just a great honor to be here. And I thank you, Dr. Miller and Elaine, just how good you take care of me and uh, Chris and just everybody here. It, it just really, I feel loved and cared for. So thank you. I love to be here. And uh, today we're going to be in 2 Timothy, and we'll get there in a little bit. But uh, I want to just kind of share a few things with you, kind of what I'm learning and seeing. Uh, this was a difficult uh, spring for us at Center Shot. We had to cancel a lot of our um, indoor tournaments, which is it's a major, major funder, a fundraiser for Center Shot. And we were just thinking, okay, Lord, what are you doing? Well, if you remember last time when I was here, I spoke about loving environment developers and how God calls us to be a loving environment developer. And what happened when we saw that the tournaments were going to be canceled, we just began to pray and said, Lord, what do you want us to do? And he just immediately, we had no downtime whatsoever, he immediately threw us into connecting with coaches all over the country and it has been unbelievable growth for center shot because churches are recognizing you can shoot archery six feet apart really easy. And you can shoot archery indoors, outdoors. It, it has been a great season of growth and development in our coaches around the country. We've been able to pour into them. We do a, a weekly call. In fact, uh, we've got some coaches uh, joining us today from around. I just want to give a shout out to you guys. I got my friends and family from Green Bay. Love you guys. So, you know, it's just been a whirlwind of activity when we thought it was, what's, what are we going to do? And now we saw that this new ministry season that we got, you know, kind of pressed into, we didn't know what it was going to be like. It was different, but it has been so good. So I just want to, you know, kind of encourage you. You guys are going into a new ministry season here at this church, and, and actually we're all in a new ministry season. But that doesn't mean that God's still not at work, right? So I want to share with you what God's been teaching me um, as I've been traveling around, uh, training up new churches and training up new coaches, and um, there's, there's a uh, triple crown tournament that is an outdoor tournament that I've been able to shoot in. My boys travel with me a lot, and we've been able to shoot in that. In the first leg of this triple crown, it was perfect conditions. It was beautiful weather, no wind, sunny, perfect temperatures. There was no excuses whatsoever, and I shot okay. Um, it was challenging. It was a really challenging course. Um, they're usually at like a state park or something like that. Well, the second leg comes, and that was just a few weeks ago, and it was in um, the, the mountains and hills of, of Pennsylvania. And beautiful place. But by this time of the year, the forests are very, very thick, and they're dark, and there's a lot of light shadows that come in, and then there's there's a little breeze and all of a sudden, you know, there's a lot more distractions. So what we do is we grab our bow and our arrows and we trout, we, we go on a hike through a trail and they've set up these ranges where there's about 10 targets at a time. And you have to, you have to shoot a total of 40 targets and they're like a foam animal of a, a bear, a deer, or, you know, we wolverine. There's all sorts of different animals and you never know how they're going to be positioned on a log. Or, so every new lane you come to or new target, it's a kind of a, you just have to adjust and you have to make the best shot you can. Well, we're hiking through and it's called for rain that day and I get to the target and it is so hot and it is, it's these pop-up showers. So it's sunny for one minute and the sun is coming through and you can see the target. And then the cloud comes over and it's pouring rain. And this is happening back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, I'm trying to look down this lane and I'm trying to judge how far that target is and set my sight. And I look up again and I, 
my glasses are fogging up. I'm getting to that age that I've got to shoot with glasses on now. And, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I'm going to have a horrible score. I just started getting all this pressure. I started getting, this is not good conditions. And I started to feel like a failure. And I hadn't even gone through, I just started losing confidence in what was going to happen. And I look up again, and I hear, you can imagine this lane, but these trees are just blowing. The rain is coming down. The steam is fogging up. I can barely see it. And I go, okay, well, I just said a little prayer. I said, Lord, I need some stillness. I need some stillness to make this shot. Because I've been paired with two or three people. I don't even know them. And... There, you know, there's all that pressure of, I don't want to look where I'm just launching arrows into the forest. So this is my release, that one of them that I use. And, and I'm praying, and, and I can barely even make out what this target is. And, and I pick up my bow, and I'm just asking for stillness. And I have to take all of this craziness that's going on, and I just have to completely focus it out. So I draw my bow back. And I make the shot. And the wind is going, and the, I have no idea. I have no idea if it's a good shot or not. I get my binoculars out. They're so fogged up, I can't even see out of them. So we all walk down there to do our score. And you know what? I had a good shot. I was like, oh, my goodness. How in the world did I make a good shot? Well, we get to the next target, and it's a completely different thing. I'm sliding. I fell down in the mud. It's just it's laughable, right? There's so many things going on. And as I went through that tournament, I started realizing I couldn't get where I had my pinpoint accuracy, aim small, miss small. I couldn't even see hardly. I just had to pick an area. And I just remember saying, Lord, I'm just kind of shooting with grace. Would you just give this arrow favor? Give me favor. I'm just going to do my best. Would you believe it? I finished higher in that tournament than any of the other tournaments I've shot so far. Isn't that crazy? It's like, how can that be? So I learned some things. As I'm going around the country, one of the advantages for me is I'm, I'm being on the road a lot. I don't have to be in front of the TV a lot. But when I am, I get a lot of noise. I get a lot of distractions. I have a lot of stuff going on. I don't even know what's true necessarily anymore. There's a lot of things going back and forth so much. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is just like shooting in that last tournament I was in. I need some stillness, Lord. Would you give me some stillness? Whew. Yeah. That's where truth comes from. That's where grace comes from. That's where his grace comes in. So I want to read this scripture for you today. And, and let's... Let's dive in and see what Paul is speaking to Timothy here in this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier. Like at serving, excuse me, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs since he wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, and he goes on here to say an athlete or a farmer, and the point that Paul is making is he's talking about a soldier, an athlete, or a farmer. We're going to lump those all into they're part of something bigger. They're part of a bigger picture. This scripture takes place when Paul's in Rome. And before we go into that, I just want to pray. And I just want God to give us some stillness right now. Because he's about to speak to each of us about what he wants us to learn and to take forward. So let's just pray for some stillness here. Father in heaven, we've worshipped you this morning and it was good. 
we see how good you are to us. We've opened your word, and we're asking that you would still our hearts and our minds. Father, take away all the noise and the distractions and just speak directly to us. Heal our brokenness. Give us encouragement. Give us new life and new strength. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So Paul is in prison in Rome. And he is... This may not look good. He is, he is sent for his protege, Timothy, from Ephesus. And he says, go get Timothy and have him come here because I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this one. This time it's not good. I, my, my trial is not going good, and I don't think I'm going to make it out of here. So Timothy, send for Timothy. Get him to come here. Now, Timothy had some amazing people in his life. His grandmother and his mother... Lois and Eunice, they poured their life into Timothy, training him up. And Paul knew that. And Paul poured his life. Paul was like a spiritual father to Timothy. And he discipled Timothy and poured his life into him. And Paul is sending for Timothy. And Paul understands in this time, Timothy's dealing with some struggle. In this time in the history of what's going on, Timothy's over in Ephesus, and there are some, um, there's some teaching in the church that is not good. There is some disunity. There is a new king in Rome, uh, Nero, and he has put out a decree. He is, he's going to do away with Christians. He's going to do away with the church. And there is a lot of noise and a lot of difficulty. And Timothy, he wants to minister, but he begins to second guess himself. We all do that. I know I do that. You know, I'm trying to lead a ministry and it's amazing to see what God's doing through that. And there's times where the decisions we make and boy, there's people not happy about that decision or not happy about that decision. I mean, driving here, I go into one gas station, I have a mask on, no one else does. I go into another gas station, I don't have a mask on, everybody else does. And then they look at you, you begin to feel that shame. It's just, we we all battle with that. So Timothy is battling with that. And Paul is saying, okay, before I go, I want Timothy to know some things. Let's go to verse one. He says, Timothy, you then, my son, I've poured into you. You're my son. I've been a spiritual father to you. You're my son. I want you to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is so powerful here. When I was trying to focus so hard on how I used to do my shot process and I would pick a a very fine, I've got all these fancy lenses that I can see all these, none of it mattered. I just had to get in the general area and say, Lord, I need some grace. And it came through. Timothy is in need of some grace. You know what grace is? It's it's Christ's loving favor on you. You are loved. And Paul wants Timothy to know, Timothy, do you know whose you are? You are loved. And he says, this grace, it also has power to have joy. Yeah, it's hard to have joy when you're afraid. It's hard to have joy joy when there's so many distractions. But Christ's grace is so incredibly powerful. His love for each one of us gives us the power to have joy. It's greater than anything we're going through. It's more powerful than anything we'll see. I just forget it a lot. I forget that I'm covered in it. I forget that I can walk in it. Especially when I speak 
to my wife sometimes. I'm not speaking with as much grace. Sorry, honey. She's watching. I'm trying to earn some points here. No. God's really been trying to show me and teach me I can have joy because of the loving favor that exceeds everything. And Paul is saying, Timothy, listen, you're going to need this joy. You're going to need this loving favor. You're going to need this grace that is in Christ Jesus. And here's why. In the verse 2, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. So Paul pours his life into Timothy, and then he says, Timothy, I want you to entrust this to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. That's four generations. And here's what God is showing me. Even though we're in a really odd time, and it's different, there is still disciple making, there is still a greater mission that we're a part of that we need to be on. And the more that I get immersed in that and focused on that, the more fun I'm having. And you know what? I'm seeing life transformation happen. In fact, this may actually be one of our greatest opportunities. There are people all around us that are dealing with all the noise, struggling for the truth, struggling for something that they can count on. It's right here, right? So my prayer is I'm starting to ask for that grace. Lord, help me receive it and feel it and and know that it's there. Help me to walk in it. Help me to, to, to have it in my speech to my family. In fact, I'm also asking God to show me the people that are around me, I'm actually asking for the ministry opportunities in a way now that I've never asked before. Because they're all around me. And you know what? Paul is saying to Timothy, hey, we're halfway done. There's still a lot of more disciples to make. There's still a lot of people around you that need to know that they are loved and they have Christ's favor on them and they can have the knowledge and saving grace of the gospel. And they can be raised up, learned how to, learning how to rightly divide the word of God so that they can then share that with their family and their loved ones and their community. So out of all of this, I'm learning to shoot with grace. I'm learning that it takes some stillness. I had to ask for some stillness. Continue on here. Verse 3, endure hardships with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. One of my favorite translations there says entangled. Traveling as much, not being in front of the TV, it's helped me not get as entangled. In fact, It's been so incredibly busy, and we've been so moving on the mission. It's been easier to stay uninvolved. I'm not getting entangled. I'm not getting wounded emotionally. I'm not fighting. I'm not being offended. I'm I'm seeing Christ work in incredible ways. And I want to stay focused on the mission, and I want to encourage you to do the same. I want to see the people that are all right around you that need your life poured into them. I want them to see that. I want them to see how Christ is loving them through you. That's what's getting to happen for me. And it's the joy is coming back. So we're almost done. Paul is saying, Timothy, I know that you're discouraged. I know that you have some shame that's building in your life. 
I know that there is a serious difficulty that you're dealing with. There's distractions all around us. All the time, there's distractions. But you know what? We got to stay focused on the mission. It's bigger than what we're dealing with. It's greater than what we will see. And now is a powerful time. Amen? The doors are open. People are searching. Let's stay on mission. To close out tonight, I want to just, or to this morning, I want to just pray for you. I want to pray that God begins to show you the people that you can pour your heart into. Could be your kids, your siblings, your parents, your neighbors, your coworkers, your spouse. Someone needs you. Someone needs the grace, the favor, and the joy that comes from Christ. Let's ask for it, and then let's go be on mission. So let's pray.